Exchange traded funds, or ETFs, are becoming extremely popular around the world, especially in Australia. Billions of dollars of investor money has been poured into Australian ETFs over the last decade or so. I understand why. ETFs allow you to get a basket of shares or assets with a single trade, and they usually aim to replicate the performance of an index like the S&P ASX 200 or whatever. Instead of risking your money on a single stock, you spread that risk across hundreds or thousands of top performing companies. Anyway, in this video I'll walk you through the 10 most popular ETFs in Australia, ordered by market capitalization. Market cap simply refers to how much a company is worth, as determined by the stock market. So basically, how much money is being invested in a particular company or ETF. Market capitalization or size, is important because ETFs must reach a certain size to become viable. As ETFs gather more assets, it becomes easier for them to cut their expense ratios to continue attracting more funds. On the other hand, ETFs which haven't achieved critical mass sometimes shut down and return investor funds or increase their fees to cover their costs. Obviously, just because an ETF is popular doesn't mean it's the best, but it's a good indication. Anyway, let's get started. Number 10. VAF – Vanguard Australian Fixed Interest Index ETF with $1.43 billion in assets and a 0.2% management fee, VAF seeks to track the return of the Bloomberg Osbond Composite Zero Plus Year Index. It invests in high-quality income-generating securities issued by the Commonwealth Government of Australia, state governments, as well as overseas entities that issue debt in Australia. It has quarterly distributions and has had pretty decent returns considering the craziness of 2020, with a one-year return of 3.9%. 7%. Over five years, it's fared a little bit better at 4.6%. Number 9. VEU – Vanguard All World XUS Shares Index ETF With a market cap of $1.6 billion and a low management fee of 0.08%, VEU seeks to track the return of the FTSE All World XUS Index. It provides exposure to many of the world's largest companies listed in major developed and emerging countries outside the US. Companies like Alibaba, Nestle, Samsung, and Toyota. It's also got quarterly distributions. Over the past year, it's fallen 0.92%. Again, not great, but understandable. Historically though, it's had a 7.49% annual return over 10 years, which is pretty good. It should be noted that VEU is domiciled in the US, so it requires you to fill out US tax forms. Number 8. VAP – Vanguard Australian Property Securities Index ETF as many of you would know, property is a bit of an obsession with many Australians. This ETF has $1.65 billion in assets, a management fee of 0.23%, quarterly distributions, and seeks to track the S&P ASX 300A REIT index. Basically, this means it invests in property groups such as Centre and Stockland. Understandably, it's had pretty awful returns over the last year of minus 17.16%. However, historically over five years, it's had returns of 6.1%. I personally wouldn't invest in VAP, but that's just me. Many Australians would politely disagree. Number 7. IOO – iShares Global 100 ETF with $1.79 billion in assets and semi-annual distributions, this ETF seeks to track the return of the S&P Global 100 Index. It has a fairly high management cost of 0.40%, but it invests in 100 multinational blue-chip companies of major importance in global equity markets. Companies such as Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet, i.e. Google. It has had massive one-year returns of 14.57%, with a 10-year average of 13.1%. That's really good. Number 6. VTS – Vanguard US Total Market Shares Index ETF With a market cap of $1.88 billion and quarterly distributions, VTS is quite cheap to invest in with a very low management fee of 0.03%. It seeks to track the performance of the CRISP US Total Market Index, providing investors with exposure to some of the world's largest companies listed in the United States. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. Similar to VEU, it's also domiciled in the US, so requires you to fill out US tax forms. It's had one 
10-year returns of 10.46%, with average returns over 10 years of 17.08%, which obviously is really good. Number 5. IOZ – iShares Core S&P ASX 200 ETF With a market cap of $2.1 billion and a low management fee of 0.09%, IOZ is a great way to invest in 200 of Australia's biggest companies. As the name suggests, it tracks the S&P ASX 200 index, with major companies such as CSL, Com uh, Commonwealth Bank, NAB and Woolworths. It also has quarterly distributions, so if you'd like to invest in the Australian share market, this is certainly a good option. Returns haven't been very good over the last year, with losses of 5.15%. However, its five-year average is 7.24%, which is okay. Number 4. VGS – Vanguard MSCI Index International Shares ETF with a market cap of $2.23 billion, quarterly distributions, and a reasonable management fee of 0.18%, VGS seeks to track the return of the MSCI World X Australia Index, with net dividends reinvested in Australian dollars. This is one of the ETFs that I invest in. It provides exposure to many of the world's largest companies listed in major developed countries outside of Australia. Companies such as Apple, Facebook, and Tesla. In terms of market allocation, it mainly invests in North America, Japan, and Europe, but also has smaller investments in places like Hong Kong, Singapore, and Israel. In total, VGS invests in over 1,500 of the world's biggest companies. Over the last year, it's had returns of 6.82%, and over five years, it's been averaging annual returns of 9.65%. Decent, to say the least. Number 3. AAA – BetaShares Australia High Interest Cash ETF with $2.34 billion in assets, a management fee of 0.18%, and monthly distributions, AAA aims to provide exposure to Australian cash deposits, with monthly income distributions that exceed the 30 bank bill swap rate BBSW. They put your money in deposit accounts at a number of different banks around Australia, including NAB, Rabobank, and JP Morgan Chase. Over the last year, it returned 1.01%, which isn't fantastic, but it's safe. Its five-year rate averages 1.89% per annum. Personally, I would just open my own bank accounts rather than invest in this ETF, but if you don't want to do that, or don't like the idea of locking your funds away in a term deposit, then you can pay BetaShares a small fee to manage it all for you. Number 2. IVV – iShares S&P 500 ETF AUD With $3.23 billion in assets, with a super low fee of 0.04%, this is the smart way of investing in the hugely popular S&P 500. This fund is actually domiciled in Australia, removing the need to complete US tax forms. All the big name companies are there – Apple, Amazon, Johnson & Johnson. It's had a one-year return of 10.6% and a 10-year average annual return of 17.15%. If you want to invest in the largest 500 US companies in a single fund, this is certainly a good way to do it. And the number one most popular ETF in Australia, VAS – Vanguard Australian Shares Index ETF with $5.76 billion in assets, a 0.10% management fee, and quarterly distributions, this is by far Australia's largest ETF by market capitalisation. I personally invest in this ETF. The main difference between VAS and IOZ is that VAS invests in the top 300 Australian companies rather than the top 200. Otherwise, they're fairly similar – CSL, the big banks, West Farmers, and Woolworths, they're all there. As expected, VAS hasn't performed all that well over the last year, with an annual drop of 4.73%, but over 10 years, it's been averaging 7.62%. Because it invests in Australian companies, shareholders are entitled to franking credits, which basically allow you to save on tax. Anyway, they're the most popular ETFs in Australia. If you're looking to invest in ETFs, check out the invitation link below to get some free trades with an online broker called Self Wealth, Australia's cheapest broker. I use them, and I found them to be very good. Cheers!